Rich Robin here. It is Sunday, the 20, 20th November, and I have uh, experienced my hot rod on my meat singer going out. And like many others that have pellet grills have experienced as well, if anything's going to go on a, on a pellet cooker, it will be the hot rod. Typically is the first thing that will go out and obviously cause you issues. There are ways of manually lighting your fire pot uh, if your hot rod does go out on you, which is what I did when mine went out. I had a storm hit, uh, and about three weeks ago, I think, three or four weeks ago, I'm just now getting into changing the hot rod out now, pulling the old one out, changing and putting a new one in. But I've still been cooking because you can manually light these fire pots with like little Weber cubes or however you want to light the fire pot, and you can keep cooking. The hot rod is to get the fire going once it gets going for the most part. It will run all day as long as you have pellets in it. So that's how I've been cooking for the past, I don't know, probably four weeks. I cook, uh, I cook every weekend. So I'm just now getting time to change the hot rod out. And I got Thanksgiving coming up, so I want my hot rod working on my fire pot. And here I go. So what I, I'm going to turn this camera around. And I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. It, it literally takes about 15 minutes to do it, I guess. But and I know those videos with Smoke Daddy because we use Smoke Daddy Pelt Pro hoppers. I know those videos that they put on there. And I think in their video they re recommend removing the hopper to do this. I don't do the hopper. I've replaced one for a customer of mine that wasn't too far from my, my shop when his went out. Uh, and now I'm replacing mine. And it does. It takes about 15, maybe 20 minutes uh, to do it. And I'm going to spin the camera around and show you all what I'm doing in case this happens to you all. It'll kind of help y'all. I wish I had a camera rolling somewhere that y'all could see what I'm doing, but I don't. This is last minute. Again, it's Sunday and it's cloudy, overcast. And me and Blue are, where are you at, Blue? Me and Blue are kind of bored. So I'm like, you know, why not go outside and just get this thing, just do it. If I don't do it, it's not gonna happen. I've been procrastinating now for a month. So here we go. Let me turn the camera around and show you what I'm doing. All right, so here is my meat slinger. Many of y'all see it on my videos, me cooking all the time. It's my hybrid, meat slinger 36 hybrid. And what I've got is the first thing I did was I put gloves on. And I got a cap uh, light on, a headlight, so I can see what I'm doing in here. Because, uh, it's, again, it's dark. But inside here, I'm going to turn my light on. Inside here, I removed the fire pot. That's your stainless steel fire pot. It is literally four screws there, 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 and there on the corners, four corners. You take those screws out and this literally just lifts out. You may have to twist it. Let's see if I can get it in there. You may have to twist it a little bit to get it out because the hot rod is still gonna be attached to it. Um, and I'm just hanging it there to get it out of my way. Now I've got to find the hot rod because now that I've injected with it, I've pushed the hot rod back up in there. I'll have to fish that thing back out. But normally the hot rod's just sitting right, right there right there all right but i've been jacking with it over there and i pulled it back so i'm going to shove it back out so i can get it but what i'm going to do is i plugged in the new hot rod that's the new hot rod i just got up under here and i don't know if y'all can see that or not got up under here and i disconnected the old hot rod and i plugged in the new one i kind of hung it right here and then i turned it on to make sure this thing gets hot and you can see it's discolored it was getting hot so I pulled the fuse and shut it back down, letting it cool now. And I was like, you know what, let me shoot a video of this. That's how the video came about. So I'm letting it cool and uh, it may be cool now, but I'm going to tape this end with electrical tape. I'm gonna tape this end, yeah, it's, it's cool now. I'm gonna tape this end to the end of the old rod or the, the connector for the existing original hot rod that's actually in there. So I'm going to take these two together and I'm going to pull this hot rod out from the inside and all this should pull through there. And I'll get over here and I will pull it out and then the new rod is going to be attached to the end of that, right? So the new rod will be here, it'll be plugged in over there and I just have to put that back in. Guys, yeah, seriously, this, I don't even know if it takes 10 minutes, I'll, I'll be honest, it really, it's, it's that fast. So that's what I'm doing and I'm going to shut the video off so I can do that. And I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I'm back. I got it out. And I'm going to turn this off. 
So I got it out, and like I mentioned earlier, I had actually pulled the hot rod too far back rather than trying to fish it to get it back up and then tape it to pull the new one in. I happen to have one of these right here. I don't know if anybody has that or not, but you can buy these for like nine bucks. I think that's what it cost me, but I had this because for sinks in my house and trailers and stuff like that. So I just used it and fished it through. Very easy. It, again, guys, this took me, I think, the total time was like 10 minutes to change that hot rod out. It was uh, pretty quick. I'm gonna spin it around and show you what all I got. Four screws on top of the fire pot, one screw inside there to actually remove the hot rod from the fire pot. And then you come over here, there's a little plate down here. Unscrew the four screws and this will drop down from the bottom there. And then once you get there, I don't know how much you can see, I want you to flip it. You can see everything under there. Once you get to access it all easily. There's only one plug that you have to unplug which is the one for the hot rod right there. That's it. And you can see where it runs through. Up there, there's the fan turning there. That's your hot rod right there, the wires. And make sure you run it through the holes that it comes out of. There's a hole there, there's another hole there because it keeps the wires out of that fan. You don't want the wires getting in your fan. You'll, you'll tear your fan up. And then that won't work. You'll be replacing that. So one connector here, and that's it. You don't have to remove anything. You don't have to remove the controller. You don't have to remove the... the uh, hopper none of that it's it's all that easily accessible and again 10 minutes and you're done 10 minutes man you're done you're up and running like i am now all right i'm back had to secure my dog for that doe there was a 10 point buck out there too i was uh hmm. i don't know why i drive to louisiana to go deer hunting i can just shoot deer in my front yard right here obviously <laughs> that deer don't know who he's playing with out here i got the pit fired up too anyway um so I'm just putting everything back together now. Down there, I just uh, put a couple zip ties on the wires. Just wanna make sure nothing gets up in that fan. You can hear the fan going. I'm also gonna go grab some oil, uh, a little WD-40. I'm gonna spray the fan uh, shaft. Smoke Daddy recommends that you do that maintenance periodically. And while I'm in there, I might as well just squirt a little WD-40 on it. Kind of clean out whatever dust, dirt that may be up in there, grease, whatnot. And uh, lubricate it just a little bit and uh, keep my fan turning properly on this RPMs with a little maintenance. Uh, again, this stuff is easy to do and I recommend everybody should, should do this to their, to their cookers is you know, maintain them periodically, it's all it takes. If you do that, then you know, these things will run fine for you. Uh, otherwise you wind up you know, buying fans, motors. <laughs> but uh, it's electric, man. Uh, and you know, shit happens, power surges, storms whatnot and uh but the good thing is they're so easy to work on i mean they're ridiculously easy to work on and the parts are cheap and again if you got a gator pit you got a one-year warranty on that ho that hopper and all the components in it so you're covered on that and of course you got your lifetime on the, on the cooker itself all this on my website so you go to my website and look at all that <coughs> and uh that's it guys i'm in that 15 minute shutdown cycle and you can see let me turn this thing around see down there it's already burned up my pellets and and done i'm gonna let it cool i'm gonna come back with my shop vac i'm gonna clean it all out and uh, it's gotten dark on me now i wasn't gonna clean my meat racks but now it's got dark on me so i'm not gonna mess with that yet they're not that dirty anyway um i've only got one rack that i cooked on last time i cooked uh, oh a little advice too while i'm here y'all is if you're only gonna cook on one rack in here like the other day i had like a brisket and i don't know four racks of ribs if you're going to cook on that, remove all the racks below that you're not using. Move those up top. That way you're not dripping stuff on the bottom racks that you aren't even using. And then you don't have to worry about cleaning those out, man. So, you know, if you're doing like I did, I had four racks of ribs and a brisket. I had them all on my rack about right here. I think I did a video on that. All on a rack right here. Take those racks out below. Just move them up top. you got so much storage space in there. It's ridiculous. Uh, move them up top. Get them out of the way. See, so you know, that's, that's just less racks you got to clean out after that cook. Uh, like I said, I've only got the one I got to clean. Uh, and I think it's it's this one, that one there. So I, it was here, so I moved it there so I could work down there. So I just got that one rack to clean off, and, and it was clean before. So I really just need to kind of scrape it and hose it with a water hose and throw it back in there and squirt some canola oil on it. And 
you know, fired up for Thanksgiving. Not sure what all I'm going to cook on Thanksgiving. I know I'm frying a turkey. I usually do racks of ribs. I uh, don't have a whole lot of family coming in this go around. My family's kind of spread out now uh, between my, my son and his wife's family and all that. But uh, anyway, I'm digressing on that. But that's what's happening today with the hot rod that went out on Rich's personal meat slinger. It's the first time I've had a hot rod on my meat slinger or my pellets ever go out, period. Uh, so I feel you guys that when it happens, you know, it's frustrating in the middle of cook, especially if you don't know what you're doing. In my case, I knew how to fire it back up. And I, I'm going to recommend this too because those, those customers that called me, let me turn this back around. When those customers contacted me or called me, uh, to let me know that their hot rods went out uh, and said it, you know, it, it, I'm just going to be honest, y'all, said it run their, I haven't done the hot, said it run their cook, didn't know that they could fire that thing right back up and keep cooking. Read the owner's manual that comes with your gator pit. It tells you that. Read the owner's manual. I know nobody reads the owner's manual, but had they read the owner's manual, they could have finished their cook uh, and not been frustrated and having to move their meat to another cooker or whatever it is they did at that time read your owner's manual man you got to read it because had any of those customers that, that read that would have known oh i just fire this thing right back up it's all it takes it takes two minutes to fire it back up you don't have to have the hot rod that lights your fire pit just build a fire light a fire in there light the pellets uh, and there's different ways of doing that watch smoke daddy's videos on their smoke daddy youtube channel they tell you they show you exactly how to do that and uh, i'm gonna do a video as well and show you how to do that uh, I gotta get those little Weber cubes though. I don't have those. Or you can use little campfire sticks. I think I have those, but I'm not doing it tonight. Uh, I've done enough on this on a Sunday afternoon doing this right here. And I want to go chill out with my family. Um, anyway, so Rich Robin, Meat Singer 36 Hybrid. Uh, showed you as best I could uh, holding my cell phone uh, on how to change that hot rod out. It literally takes you about five, about 10 minutes. I said about five, about five. Not dang it, about 10, 15 minutes to do that. And uh, it's very simple, uh, basic tools. Uh, all I had was, uh, you know, I use these little Milwaukee things. I love these, but you can use hand, hand screwdriver. Uh, this makes it really fast, really simple, uh, along with the attachments there. You can see that. Uh, here's my burnt rod. There's a burnt one. Um, two years old, I guess. I think. I don't know. I think I can look at my videos when I first got my meat slinger home, but I think it's about two years old now. Um, the ones that Smoke Daddy replaces these with, these are, I don't know where these made, but they got a new manufacturer on the hot rods now. So I think the hot rods are a lot better on uh, the new the new ones coming out or the replacements coming out. Uh, but the good thing is they do make good on it. So Dan and Dennis and all those folks over there at Smoke Daddy Inc. really back up their product and they will take care of you on that. That's another reason why I use them because they do back up their product. They're, they're a good company. They're a mom pop company, so to speak. And uh, that's it, guys. I'm gonna clean up and, and put my pan back up, up underneath my hopper and I'm gonna go in the house and chill out. Rich Robin, Gator Pit of Texas, Custom Barbecue Pits. I will see y'all later.